Verbally Effective with Ina Esco is an interview-style podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus. Each week, I'm joined by a featured guest with roots in Memphis. Verbally Effective delves into each guest's personal journey to uncover the incredible stories fueling their purpose, the highs and lows of their pursuits, and how through their passion, they are moving the culture forward. Hey, this is Christy Taylor of Christy Taylor Consultant and the host of The Christy Taylor Show. You can find me on ChristyTaylorConsulting.com. And yes, I'm hanging out with my girl, Ina Esco, on Verbally Effective. You are listening to Chef Reagan, author of The Single Girl's Guide to Great Cooking, also known as The Cosmopolitan Cook. And you are listening to Verbally Effective with Ina Esco. Check it out. I told you guys I have my beautiful soror, my beautiful, talented superstar soror, Kia Johnson in the building. What's up, beautiful? Hey, love. That's such a warm introduction. Thank you. That voice, <laughs> that voice, that voice is just ringing through my earphones. How are you today? I am wonderful. It's Sunday fun day, you yes, know? So yes. that's, what, that's the vibe I'm on. Yes. Sunday fun day vibes. Good vibes on Sunday always. Always. And I'm so glad you can join Join me today, even though this is musically effective. I said, Kia, we're gonna get verbally effective yes. and all in your business. <laughs> I'm ready because <laughs> I know you have a lot coming up. I know you got a big show. Yes, on yes, the way. Yes, yes, a huge show on the way next Sunday. This time next Sunday, I will be at the Halloran yes. with three other incredible artists for the Women of Soul third third series. Um, this is the third time we're doing it. Okay. The Black Music Month edition. Black so, Music yeah. Month. Y'all popping Black Music yeah. Month off. Yeah, I I love it. I love it. We're going to talk about more about this show, but let's get into Kia Johnson's business. Ooh. Where are you originally from, Kia? I don't know how to answer that question, Ina. I know, right? I know, right? We had a little chat about this yes. uh, about a week ago. We did. We did. I claim Memphis 100% up and down, but I was born in San Antonio, Texas. I was there for like 10 months, and then I've moved all over the world. My mm-hmm. dad was in the military. He was in the Army. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of a, a child of the world. And then mm-hmm. as an adult, of course, you know, I've done those cruises and contracts. So I'm always kind of in and out, uh, but I always kind of claim Memphis because I've spent the most time here um especially in my adult life for sure yes and um similar to you i am a military brat guess what i don't think we talked about this i was born in san antonio texas (laughs) stop playing i was not that i know that i remember a lot about san antonio because we moved when I was a baby, but yeah, that's not my birth certificate. Yeah, mine too. Another <laughs> was it Bayhar County? I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I need to look. <laughs> so was Kia Johnson into performing uh, the arts as a young child? Absolutely. If you can imagine, um, I went to nine different schools in 12 years. I, I feel you. The transition right? is real. The transition with is real. parents in the military. Yep. So the only consistent thing that I had was the arts, was music, was mm. church, was singing. Um, and I, I say it's my longest relationship and it's the one relationship that hasn't hurt me Mm. um the business has but music hasn't yeah so the business could be just a dirty dirty monkey with a wig (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so i've always sang always Mm -hmm. you know dance i'm not a dancer but love to dance and move Mm -hmm. and and you could do a a one two a little one two three four (laughs) maybe a five six (laughs) yes 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 okay so when you were younger who were the artists that Kia Johnson just was enamored with? Listen, Whitney. Oh, Whitney. Yes. It's always Whitney for me. It's always Whitney for me. Whitney Houston, 110%. It was her class. It was her elegance. It was her voice, of course, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, how she made a song her own. It made you just feel to your bones every word that she was saying. I didn't understand love then, but I thought I did because of how Whitney yes. sung it, you know? Um, so for me, that was like top tier and it gets real scarce after that like it was just mm-hmm. I was obsessed with Whitney I was yes. it was Whitney for me as well mm-hmm. um I think when I was a little girl what was the song um uh I believe the children are future I believe the children <laughs> girl we used to always hold the mic thinking we was Whitney Houston yes that said yes, it all yes that was the first uh talent show song that I sang yes yeah, it yeah. was that but but then my mom playing her records was playing uh you give good <laughs> You give good okay. love to and me. And I'm just dancing. Yeah, I don't know what, don't know what she's talking about. Good love. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ooh, it. Kia That's Johnson. It. Okay, so mm. let's talk about 
uh, when you were a young woman, mm-hmm. Kia Johnson, mm-hmm. um, were you still moving around? Um, no. So after I finished, I went to A State, Arkansas State University, okay. which is Arkansas in Jonesboro. State. Uh, my family was actually in Virginia, though. So I came a thousand miles out and went to school. Why Arkansas State? Because I always knew I wanted to major major in radio, television, broadcasting. Boom. Hello. Boom. Come on. Come it's on. always been radio for me, too. Yes. And you're on that microphone. <laughs> and that voice sounds <laughs> exhilarating. Thank you. But it was one of the top three or top 10 schools in the nation at mm-hmm. the time um, and I always knew that's what I wanted to do so I came out there and then once I graduated my, my dad had retired and moved to Memphis and okay. so then I ended up in Memphis so he retired in yes. Memphis yes now let me ask you this while you were at Arkansas State even though you were majoring in radio mm-hmm. and TV and mm-hmm. broadcasting mm-hmm. Were you performing at different events in Arkansas State? I was, Arkansas State? I was, and I have to give my cousin credit. My cousin, you have to understand, like, I love to sing, but I was super shy, if mm-hmm. you could believe it. Like, I would stand in one spot, I would look down, like, I wouldn't move. I was like, super I do sh- not believe you. <laughs> no, I know. I do not believe you. And I still get so nervous when it's time for a show. Like, it's, it's like that was my solace, but when it comes to share it, I'm bearing my soul, and that gets mm-hmm. scary to me sometimes. Yeah. That vulnerability. Um, but yeah, my cousin used to push me to, girl, mm-hmm. just go off to the town show. They can't sing better than you. And, Boom. So and, cousin knew. No, 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 no. But the joke was, <laughs> I always got third place. So. That's okay. That's okay. But you were working on the nerves. I was you working work on nerves, that. so I always had a third place smile. And. Okay. <laughs> Third place, tomorrow. yes, but that's how I got used to like performing and, yeah. and you know getting it's out the there. Training ground, the training grounds of it. Okay, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha Listen, Incorporated. And, did, and, did. and how did that come about? I want to know. I want to know. know. I always so again. I grew up more on the East Coast, uh-huh. and I did the debutante ball, which um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority was the mm-hmm. one that kind of facilitated that they were just beautiful and intelligent and kind and mm-hmm. I just hadn't seen that many black women in something together yes. that were working together that were helping us and I thought that was so beautiful mm-hmm. um and then I had done another talent show but with the mega sci-fi and saw the black men and I'm like oh my what is this my mm-hmm. parents weren't Greek I had no idea but I knew then like I want to be a part of something like that so when yeah. I got to a state my cousin was an aka okay and I'm like you know what I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. I'm gonna jump out in these I waters love yeah I love it how many were on your Line. Seven. Oh, that's a nice it's number. It's a nice, yeah. Seven yes, is seven. juicy. Yeah, it was juicy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Alexis? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, now let's get into, you know, we spent the first part of the interview talking about your upbringing and yeah. your college days, sorority days. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about, and your dad retiring mm-hmm. from the Army mm-hmm. and settling in Memphis. Yes. The amazing Memphis. The amazing <laughs> grit and grind city. He did. Good. He gonna make you grit and grind. <laughs> so when you landed in Memphis, what yeah. were your immediate thoughts? Oh my gosh, I was in love with this place. Mm-hmm. I'm such a foodie, and the food was incredible. Mm-hmm. The music was bone chilling and soul stirring. The it just felt like it was just perfect and ripe for someone who wanted and loved music to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and that quickly got kind of (laughs) tainted how did it get tainted kia oh my gosh i just remember being so thirsty to learn Mm -hmm. and everyone that i asked just was not willing to share information they were gatekeeping they they were gatekeeping they were territorial they Mm. were and i I couldn't understand it because again i just came from the the school of thought of everybody shares a military Mm -hmm. like all of us on the on the base together yeah we share things like go stay with so-and-so because mama got to go to this like we shared and so i wasn't used to such a uh i don't know a selfish i guess approach to information wow that was kind of that was kind of hurtful so how did you handle it i don't really know oh i do Uh uh-uh, I feel a story. Oh, uh, yeah. I was working at Alsac, and okay. my boss, uh, American Idol, came to town. Mm. And my boss said, You should audition for American Idol. I'm like, I got to work. He said, I'll give you time off. Oh, I'm not there and there. You. He ain't there no more, so ain't nobody going to get in trouble. Okay. But- <laughs> okay, Alsac. <laughs> but he gave me the time off to audition, and that's okay. what changed everything. Wow. How American was that Idol. experience? It was terrifying and okay. exhilarating. And that's when all the lights started to come on for me that, like, oh, I could do this. Like, there's mm-hmm. a whole life in music. I don't have to hide and do it in the background. Like, I can just pave my own way. And thank God, like, the the audition being televised gave me this platform that I didn't have. Wow. And then that's when I just was able to start doing things on my own. And I didn't have to wait for someone to help me or give me information. Boom. 
known because yeah. you kind of slick went viral because of right, American oh, Idol. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't go viral. It's listen, old and popping. <laughs> listen, this, and I never like to talk about this, but it's true. Like mm-hmm. this was the turning point. That audition, that opportunity, that exposure was the turning point. And then I started to get the information and believe in myself in a different way. Yeah. And I, I know you mentioned that it was terrifying because of those nerves again, because you mentioned that mm-hmm. while you were in school. Yeah. But you know what I noticed, Kia, like that nervous energy gives you I don't know it, it, it's scary but it's like I, I do the same thing when mm-hmm. I host events yeah. I have that nervous energy wow but it propels me Agreed. when it's time agree you know action Agreed. yeah yeah that adrenaline like pushes you like yes. to, to take a risk to do adrenaline. something different mm-hmm. it, does. Yeah, it does it does so uh after American Idol what changed for you everything Mm -hmm. everything now people knew who I was now people were calling me now people wanted me to come sing at this and that and this and that and this and that and did you respond with yeses of course I went crazy I said yes to everything I was everywhere doing everything and then I had to learn the business Mm, let's (laughs) talk about the business the entertainment (laughs) business okay let's talk about the good the bad the ugly with the entertainment side uh, the business side so like like us, right? Artists, we love our art, right? Mm-hmm. So we're willing to do it for free, but you can't live off of free. No, you can't. It has a <laughs> so cap on it. It has a cap on it, right? <laughs> so I had to start to understand monetizing my talent mm-hmm. and not prostituting it. There's a fine line, Ooh, right? Yes. Um, Memphis Music Foundation existed at that time. I learned a lot of information. They reached out to me. I was able to understand copywriting and, you know, how do you make your money and, you know, how do you write music and, and do your splits and placements. And oh, I mean, you just, learned the business. I learned business. the business. It's like I went to class, like, okay. for it, for real. And a lot of people don't know that side. That's true. A lot of people don't and so I try to share it with everybody that I meet you know mm-hmm. but that's when I started to learn the business and started to say okay I, I love to do this however if you want me or you want this or you want this this package it's going to cost this and, and that's mm. when I started to make money and understand had to get an accountant to say okay girl you, you making enough money that you need to pay taxes on it okay so that's that's where we started to get into wow. that yeah yeah so that was the good learning and understanding how to monetize it the bad was believing that everybody was was good oh yeah it's a lot of sharks. It's a lot. Give me one story, a shark story. We don't have to name names. Yeah, we're not going to name names. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to see Kia's face. <laughs> there was a producer that um, he, he he believed in me, said he thought it was amazing, and I should pay for this song and pay this certain amount of money. It was thousands of dollars. And at the time, I'm like, oh, he's the guy. Like, I got to pay this money. And I paid this money. And he used that money to get from overseas back home and he never gave me the track no yes was he on a contract uh with you no 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 okay no okay no yeah so it took i finally got the song but then i mm-hmm. found out that he had stole the song from somebody else so i never could use it you slick got ganked i got ganked from the overseas Ooh, thousands Jump. of dollars he just used that to get back home he got stranded over there fired from whatever he's doing how did you feel when that happened i was so mad mm-hmm. i was mad i get mad y'all like i believe I, <laughs> I got brothers and the way you know we gonna deal with yes. these hey, and then we move on. Yes. <laughs> but i was mad and i was like how could you do that if you need help getting home I'd rather help you get home than you like lie and do that Mm -hmm. you know but um that was that was part of the growing pain now although that was a hard lesson to learn I know that wasn't your only hard lesson let's talk about the women in the game Uh, wait a minute (laughs) (laughs) now I've seen some amazing women perform um around the city of Memphis yeah since I've been here, which yeah. has been since 1995, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it, it's getting better and better. Absolutely. Um, are you a diva? Let me ask you that first. Are you a diva? So, how you define diva, girl? Okay, diva. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they how, how they talk about how Patty, uh-huh, your fave uh-huh, Whitney, uh-huh, could be uh-huh, a diva. Now uh-huh. we know Whitney could be do, a diva. We do. We do. Patty Labelle, yeah, uh, yeah, Anita yeah. Baker. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which one are you? I, I don't I don't believe that I'm any of them but also I'm all of them right Ooh. because the thing that they all have in common is they want it right mm-hmm. they know their music mm-hmm. and if you hit the snare when you're supposed to hit the tom they know that mm-hmm. and I hate when people minimize what women are we're not just singers some of us just because I I use my voice I'm still an instrumentalist I'm still a, a musician mm-hmm. I know the music mm-hmm. so in that rest respect sure I'm a diva okay. if you hit the wrong stuff 
when you, we go, you gonna get on that. I'm gonna I'm say something. Yeah. However, am I cruel? No. Do I give? Do I feel like I pay probably the top in the city? Yeah. Mm. Um, or one of the top. Like I, I pay you what you're worth, probably more than what you're worth because I want you to know that I value you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like diva gets a bad connotation when nah, they just want it right, and so do I. So you've worked with quite a few ladies mm-hmm. on different shows and, and actually has has a show coming up. Yes, um, yes. But you, I remember what you told me when you first got to the city. <sighs> there wasn't a lot of sharing. No. So fast forward to today. Is it better? Um, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I hesitated. This is why I hesitated. No, I'm going to tell you why I hesitated. So the difference is when I first came to the city, there was like four places that you could go for live performance. I right? remember. Four. Yeah. Now what like, year was that? Uh, 20, 2003, 2004, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it's grown. for a decade almost, it was just those kind of four or five places. Now it's like 50,000 places. Yeah, it is. So... Uh, it's hard to connect now with people. There's so many new artists in the yeah. city that it's, it's just hard to know. Promoters. Who's who. Yeah, yeah, you know. And and I say this tongue in cheek because I'm doing a show with all women, right? Yeah. I'm a feminist. I love women. I especially yeah. love female vocalists. Um, and I think that they're all amazing, but we're all human too. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we can't put our personal feelings aside to just do a great and beautiful show or share information. Me sharing information with you doesn't mean I have to love you or go out and have drinks with you. It's just sharing information. Yeah, That's yeah. how I feel about it. And you know what? Sharing information, I mean, why not? Like, why not? no one is hurt? you. Right. You are you. Right. <laughs> it's right. all about what you do with that information. Exactly. Because you you may not do what I would do with it. Same mm-hmm. thing with American Idol. I didn't even, I made top 50, Ina. Mm. Like, it's people that made top five that I've done more with just because I grinded differently than they did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's, why well, hold the information? Why hold the information? Yeah, don't if hold If you're it. listening out there, don't hold don't it. Don't hold it. Give it away. It loose. <laughs> <laughs> Kia, let's talk about the show that you have coming up for Black Music yes. Month. Tell me all the deets. All the deets are, I don't, I don't know how to share information about the show without giving it away, right? Okay. But I feel like I need to share some information because I don't think people really understand what they're in for in this night. This is a night of soul but from all the different notes you know how uh connoisseurs of food talk about the different notes on your mm-hmm. tongue right so you got a little spicy you got a little sweet yeah, you got palate. a little mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. clean up a, a palate cleanser you got yes that's what this show is like right mm-hmm. all the different notes of soul you're going to get so you're gonna get that flat foot singing you're gonna get those runs you're gonna get those harmonies you're gonna get that performance it's all in this show. Um, there's experiences when you come in the lobby before you even get to the show. Okay, like you want to come early because you want to watch the pre-show that's going to be going on. Like it's a lot dancers. Mm. The band is a ten-piece band. Like mm. y'all, this is a show. This like, is for a real. show. And I've I put a lot of heart into it, and I'm producing it. I don't know if everybody really understands what that okay. means, but tell um, us what the producer side of this show means. Yeah, here. that means I'm putting a lot of my heart and ideas yes. and money. <laughs> oh, the money. You know that the Halloran has been amazing. There, there. It's a beautiful space. It's a mm-hmm. beautiful building. Um, it's an intimate space that I think we're really gonna love. But putting the show together, this was Joy's brainchild, Women of Soul, right? And we've had two before. This is a third one. But the whole lay of the land and the lay of the show for this particular one, I've produced in every detail. I've thought about and planned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that because I just want people to understand, like it has been a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of work. Blood, I don't want to perform. Like, I want to just be backstage because yeah. that's how tired I already am. Um, but, yeah, that's that's what it is. Wow. So yeah. you're producing, mm-hmm. you're performing. Mm-hmm. Um, how does it feel to sit in the producer role? I know you've produced shows before, yeah. but... How about this particular experience leading up to it? How how I know you said you tired, but I'm tired. <laughs> from from a from an artistic perspective, how is it? I'm so excited and what's I'm gonna be honest with you. What's breaking my heart right now is that people may not get to experience all the love that we've poured into this show. Mm. And that would just break my heart because this city, this world right now, it's just so much negativity going on. And this show is so positive mm. and so full of love. It would break my heart if people don't come see it. Like 
Mm-hmm. And by people, I mean more than 10. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, Y'all better come get them tickets. Get them tickets. Like, I just, you need a moment to just yeah. be escape and, and be mm-hmm. on, a, on a journey of love and soul. And that's You're what right. It's a you. lot going on lot in going this on. world. Yeah. We need this women yeah. of soul. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how can people get tickets? They can go to Ticketmaster. They can actually go to my website. I've got a link on the website. It's in my Instagram, Linktree, Orpheum, like, Anywhere you can type in Women of Soul, Memphis, Tennessee, but Ticketmaster is um, who the tickets are through. Yeah, it's a lot going on. It's definitely a lot going on. I'm super, super excited about the show next week. It's going to be incredible. Um, and then as we talked earlier, this is like a pinnacle moment for me being able to do Cafe Kirk with Kirk Whalum. Girl, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. When I walked inside Crosstown, there was this big monitor with your picture and Kirk on the side. I was like, okay, that's, that don't look like the Women of Soul. Oh, that's something different. I am so honored, so so honored yes. to, to. He's be amazing. He is amazing. Just a heart of gold. And like I said, this is closest I'll ever get to Whitney. Yes, um, so he used to play that horn for listen, Whitney live in concert, live in concert on the records. So just being able to be in his his aura is just an honor. So I'm super super excited about that. How did that come about? So, okay, y'all. y'all yeah, want we, want want some, okay, we want to know. We want to tell you. So I've been recording with David Porter. Okay, that's major. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And David Porter played some of the songs that I've recorded with him to, to Kirk, let him listen to him. Okay. And then he texts me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, who is this? Because he was so impressed. He, no, I just was like, <laughs> Kirk, wait, was texting me. What the heck? You is know, this really Kirk? This is what, the Kirk? You know, I didn't have him say this, the Kirk. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he was just like, I think it would be really amazing. I'm like, are you kidding me? I would be there just like shining your shoes if that's what you wanted. Yes. Um, so that's how it came up. You know what? I've been seeing a lot of uh, press for Cafe Kirk and yes. um, different things coming out about it. So when is this particular show? That particular show is July 16th. Oh, that's coming up. It's, it's next month. Um, but yeah, he, we got connected because I do The Mystic on Tuesdays. Um, mm-hmm. I sing at The Mystic and Kirk used okay. to do those. And so I started replacing him when he started traveling more. And then he heard This is me the and, perfect union. Yeah. So this <laughs> is like the first time we'll get to like actually play and stuff yes. together. So that's how that came about. So there's that. Okay. Then I'm directing Mary Poppins Jr. At the wow. Memphis. Wait a minute. Yeah. Directing, <laughs> directing Mary Poppins Jr. <laughs> Junior. Junior. Yeah, yeah. How is that? Incredible. Incredible. We just finished our first week of rehearsals, but, you know, we auditioned months ago. And now to see them, like, in person and yes. starting to put all that together. Uh, Stephen um, Prince Tate is the choreographer. Dr. Ashley uh, Davis is the uh, musical director. Mm. So working with the team of, of men that I completely trust and we've worked together so many times before and it's just super exciting to see these young people come with all their talent and stuff when can we see mary poppins jr so that's gonna be the same weekend actually july 14th 15th and 16th you're gonna be busy that weekend I am just a little bit just just, a little and bit. it's okay it's okay, no, okay. because when we talk about music business the business okay, side that's what so I'm you're out here producing uh-huh, directing uh-huh, performing uh-huh. and what what else would kia like to do that she's not doing Oh, that was loaded. <laughs> no, I <laughs> did. Mm. Do you feel that you're like in the midst of everything right now and mm-hmm. it's hard to say? No. No? Okay. Mm-mm. I want to write musicals. Okay. I love it. So I've got two that I've been writing. Okay. So when, when are we going to see these musicals come to life? Hopefully in the next couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Is that, a, is that an intense process? Uh-huh. A musical, <laughs> there are so many elements involved. Uh-huh, yeah. But but it's so wide open. If mm-hmm. you think about musical theater, um, there are, like, I only know of maybe five uh, black female musical theater composers and writers. Mm. It's wide open. And there's different points of views, like... Minorities are not monolithic. We have all types of different stories. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of would like to see some different stories come from the perspective of minorities and, and black women. And I feel like I have some of those to share. Okay. Can you give us a little a little deets on those type of stories you would like to share? Oh. Or it's under wraps because we're writing this yeah, musical. Yeah, it's, it's under wraps. But I will say this. I grew up loving 
X-Men, loving, you know, those fantasy stories and and cartoons and like Mm -hmm. simpler times that had like powerful Disney. I went to see The Little Mermaid, of course, right? By myself and like kids be quiet. How was it? You know what? I will tell you this. It was magical in some ways. They tried to modernize it, which Mm -hmm. was okay, but I feel like some things you should keep like authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was, it really was beautiful. You know, I think they could have did a little mixed media though instead. I know, I'm sorry y'all if y'all hadn't seen it yet. Um, It's okay. Spoiler yeah. alert, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert. alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> but um, they tried to keep it very authentic. So like the crab was the crab. So he didn't have much facial expression. Aww, and you missed that from Sebastian. Like, yeah, yeah, Sebastian. Flounder didn't have, you know, Aww. he was a fish. So he had no facial expression. What about Ariel? How was Ariel? She did, Holly. She's Holly. a killer singer. She's beautiful. I think they did an amazing job. But you know, she loses her voice. And so when you lose your voice, Aww. her face got to act. So I was okay. missing a little bit of that mm. facial. Part of your world. <laughs> she needed to give me a little more face. But it was it still was magical and I would still see it again. Okay. But yeah, so I've been I've hearing a lot stuff. of mixed reviews on the new little Makes mermaid. Sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. But yeah. shout outs to you, Hallie. Yeah, girl, you did your thing. And shout outs to you, Kia Johnson, Aww. for even, you know, exposing that there is opportunity in this musical Absolutely. Um directing Absolutely. sphere. Absolutely. Because that's something I've never thought of. I know. I know. I didn't either. And then I realized it's because I didn't see it. How did you see it? Did someone hip you on? No. Or is your no, research? I just started to realize I'm making the same decisions the director is telling the actor to do. Mm-hmm. Like I'm instinctively doing it. And then I was like, he should do it. And then they would do it. And I'm like, wait a minute. That means that I could do this. Mm-hmm. And I, I have coming from the musical world of putting a band together and putting a show together. It's kind of the same thing. I tell little small stories every time I sing a song. Mm-hmm. A musical is just a longer song. Yeah. So, oh, wow. yeah. So, we're going to see the musicals in the next couple of years. Yeah, girl, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> yes. Now, how can everyone uh, get in touch with Kia Johnson, follow your journey? Yeah. Please give us those deets. I will definitely do that. I've got a website that's just kiajohnson.com, K E I A Johnson. It's just been revamped by, by Wilo. They are incredible. So, I can't wait for y'all to see that. Um, but then, of course, on Instagram, KJ underscore management um, is my professional site. Facebook, I'm not on as much uh mm-hmm. but i am still you know there for now but the website is the best place gotcha and you know what one thing that we have not yet discussed Ooh. is the upcoming podcast Ooh, shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> <laughs> look so kia popped up on me at Cossett library <laughs> and she was like i want to do a podcast yeah. can we talk i'm like yes yeah. so we did a one-on-one we did and you were so helpful and and patient and thorough and I just I want to say that on here thank you for being that type of person you helped me so so much you have such a great unique idea like and it makes perfect business sense as well so you know when we talk about the business side of the entertainment business you get it yeah you definitely get it yeah so let's talk about this podcast Don't give them everything. Okay, okay, okay. So I am going to be doing a podcast with my dear friend, um, Justin, who is also an artist. And we're going to talk about love and all the things in between. Yes. So, but in a different way. I've got a new album coming. And this is going to be closely related to my album, Love is Reckless. Very closely related. Yeah. And and I love that piece of it. Um, To me, that's what's unique about the approach mm-hmm. and I already know Kia could tell a good story <laughs> and get animated on this microphone as if y'all not listening right now <laughs> you can see her smiling yes. or you can see her frowning yeah, over this can. microphone Ooh, wait. <laughs> but radio is my first love like yes. it's, it's always been my love mm-hmm. so now with this opportunity for podcasts and you were the pioneer like I've watched you for years you jumped first with hey, podcast. First. yeah you jumped in and yes. you have just amassed such a, a huge following and understanding of it so i'm like Thank okay you, this Kia. is my opportunity to yes see. it is <laughs> yes and, it, and and podcasting is just so wide open yeah. for uh creators for entrepreneurs yeah. people that have something to say and mm-hmm. want to use their voice mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. is there there are no gatekeepers in podcasting ooh, ooh. <laughs> or are they <laughs> That's a whole podcast. That's a whole podcast. Girl. <laughs> Kia Johnson, I have truly enjoyed you today. Oh, always. You can stop by and see me on Sunday anytime hey, you want. And I will. But next Sunday you'll be busy. I will. 
I will. Yes. And I hope you'll scoot on over there after your show. I will. Okay. Because it kicks off at. Well, doors open at 630, but show doesn't start till 730. Okay. Women of Soul. Women of Soul. Halloran Center. Make sure you go see my girl Kia Johnson Please. and the lovely ladies that are part of that show. Yes. Next Sunday, they can get their tickets at Ticketmaster dot com kia johnson dot com did uh-huh. I get that right? you did you okay did. any last words kia johnson no i just want to i want to thank the ladies that are on the show that's ja davis that's katrina anderson that's adagio uh the creator of the concept joy brown the halloran um my team that's working and making this happen um the day of the production team the musical director deborah williams like stephen prince tay the choreographer so i want to thank the t- it's a team mm-hmm. making this happen so thank you yes, all ma'am. it's going to be beautiful it is going to be beautiful and kia you are amazing you're such a hard worker and extremely passionate mm-hmm. about what you do super talented thank you love. and i just want the world to see that thank you and i think it's happening thank you i received it all right love all right soror i'll talk to you soon okay soror thanks for stopping by <laughs> absolutely <laughs>